the state of Illinois uh, has, of course, a lot of uh, regulations on a variety of things. But when it comes to issues like abortion or you know, being able to, to change your gender, uh, there's a lot of uh, lax regulations, including being able to change your birth certificate, and driver's license. And these are typically things you would think uh, an adult, if it's their choice, they should be able to do that. But what about for minors, for children? Uh, of course, Illinois already has on the books a law that uh, removed parental notification of abortions. Uh, but what else is out there on the horizon? Former state representative Jeannie I'm joining me right now to talk about uh, a controversial issue for sure uh, and a petition drive uh, to to make sure that uh, parents have ultimate choice when it comes to uh, how their children live their lives. Uh, State Representative Jeannie Ives, thank you so much for taking time with us this morning. It's good to talk with you. I guess just uh, go ahead and lay it out there for us. What are we looking at with the petition drive you're, uh, you're spearheading here? Sure. So by citizen initiative, the only thing we really can do in this public policy area is ask an advisory question of the electorate. It's basically a polling question. And uh, a a friend of mine decided that he wanted to do something about the lack of parental rights, the way that they've been eroded in the state. So he wanted to uh, put an, an advisory question on the ballot and I decided to help him. And so we formed Parents Matter Coalition. And our advisory question is very straightforward super easy to understand, but just says, should you have to get the written consent of a parent or guardian before you can do any non-emergency medical care procedure, treatment, um, pharmaceutical, gender modification, gender counseling or gender therapy to a minor in the state of Illinois? It's just that simple and obviously it's common sense. So, Representative, if you could, I guess, uh, you know, lay out there the the current state of this issue in Illinois. Uh, Is this something that is already happening with uh, minors getting either, you know, gender reassignment surgery or receiving uh, things like uh, hormone therapies or or other types of instances when it comes to the, the gender identity issues? So when it comes to gender identity issues, there is still a prohibition that you can seek this type of gender modification or hormonal therapies without parental consent. But what is happening is that it is official state policy of the Illinois State Board of Education that you can socially transition children behind the parents' backs in our schools. That's their official guidance. It came out when J.B. Pritzker first took office and a number of schools in our um, in our state have adopted those as their official policies and we know it's been happening in fact we know it's been happening since at least 2015 even before the controversy became more controversial so what are we looking at as far as the timeline here and the trajectory of your uh, petition are you looking to get this on for the november ballot here in illinois Yes, we are. We want it on the 2024 ballot. That means we need petition signatures, and our goal is 500,000 petition signatures. We need less than that, but we're aiming for 500,000 petition signatures, and we'd like to collect those uh, by the end of March so that we can package it all together and then submit it to the State Board of Elections the first week of May in time for the 2024 ballot. That's our, our time frame. So we really need people to you know get uh, get involved Just go ahead. You can download the petition and the instructions at our website, parentsmattercoalition.org, parentsmattercoalition.org. And uh, you can just, you know, by your own initiative, help us in this process. Now, I know uh, having covered the state of Illinois uh, for years, uh, when it comes to ballot initiatives, uh, it's... (laughs) It's very difficult, as you know, uh, to get yeah. initiatives on the ballot. I know that the Fair Maps amendments, there were what, like 600,000 signatures filed or something to that effect, if not more. Uh, but uh, that was ultimately knocked off the ballots. And you also have the, the hurdles of you know, possibly uh, only three uh, questions to be asked to the electorate on a uh, election like the November election. Uh, so, uh, you know, I guess just uh, talk about how to navigate some of these hurdles and the potential of people trying to block these questions from getting on the ballot. Yeah, no, I mean, this is simply an advisory question. It's a polling question. It doesn't even actually change law. The only way that you can do that if I have a ballot referendum is if the legislators themselves, which we have a super majority of Democrats and radical leftists have taken over the Democrat Party in the state of Illinois. There's really no common sense leadership in 
the state anymore. But they will put on the most radical um, ballot referendums. And if they do it via legislat the legislature, then it can immediately become law. So the only thing we can even do in, is, is uh, threaten them with a polling question. And oh my goodness, they will feel threatened if we get all these signatures. But uh, in the process of doing this, we've already raised so much more awareness about how parent rights have been eroded by the state legislators. I mean, no longer can you, do you even have to get uh, notification from parents uh, that parents have been notified before a minor can have an abortion. Uh, you can get hormonal birth control without parental consent. You can have your kids socially transitioned behind your back. And that's been happening. I mean, Jay Keck wrote an incredible article in 2019 in USA Today about how this happened to his daughter that he self-described is on the autism spectrum. And it happened to him right in the Hinsdale uh, school district at, in a high school. And uh, even though his, his, they had told him, they had told Hinsdale like, no, you'll call her by her proper name. You'll call her by her right pronouns. They did everything behind the parents' back to not do that. And he exposed it all. And so we just think this is this is nefarious. It's wrong. And there's no doubt that um, Illinois is an early adopter following California uh, in terms of giving minors rights over their parents. And California has already headed the way of allowing minors to do gender transitioning hormonal treatments without parental consent. And we want to stave that off. So in the process of doing this, we hope to be successful and we're working really hard to be successful. But um, I mean, there's no doubt that we're raising a lot of awareness about what the legislature has done to parental rights in this whole process of trying to get this question on the ballot. Representative, uh, you know, adults are adults and they can make their own adult decisions. Uh, children right. are, uh, of course, uh, have guardians as their parents or as guardians, um, you know, looking over them. Uh, what do you think's behind this move? I mean, I, I get that, you know, some of the, who support this idea of allowing for adults to do what they want to do and maybe, you know, fostering this uh, sense of identity with a younger generation so they don't feel bullied or they feel more accepted uh is that is that really your understanding of of the the level of you know why uh this this type of ideology is progressing more and more well i mean i don't know why the leftists think that they should be the parent in every situation but they do they just think they have better ideas than the people themselves and so it's not just in this regard, it's in every regard. They want to tell you what kind of car you have to drive, where your electricity can come from, how your business has to operate down to the minutia. And so there's no, I mean, and they just think that they know how to better parent than parents. I mean, it's the same thing with this new controversy that you all covered in Center Square about these wellness, health and wellness checks on mental health and how they they're, they literally, in the language of the bill, insinuate that if you're on Medicaid, then you definitely need to get a wellness check for your minor child on their mental health. I mean, that's that's insidious. That's that is so disrespectful of parents. And yet, this is what the leftists are doing. They think they know better how to run society than the people themselves, and that's where this is coming from. They just want whole control. And uh, you got to consider too the uh, long-term effects of not just uh, you know a young kid who uh, may have some you know attention problems in school. Uh, a story that I have, I have a yeah. friend who was uh, you know graduated high school with and he was uh, just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Went yeah. off and tried to get into uh, West Point Academy. Uh, but because he was given some uh, you know ADHD type of medications earlier on in his childhood that prevented him from getting into into West point so you got to consider that the long-term consequences there but that's just for mental health checks i mean what what do you think the long-term consequences of giving adult decisions to children who are under the age of 18. well we know what the long-term consequences are because the stories the horrific stories are coming out about how minors were transitioned earlier and now they look at themselves and they feel like they're a freak show and they they're they're having all sorts of medical issues and I think that this is it's um, it, it's um, it's the devil's work. Truthfully, it really is the devil's work. And uh, J.B. Pritzker and his family is 100 percent involved in this. This is something that Lurie Children's Hospital is all in about. They've received massive donations from the Pritzker family to hold that up. Uh, it, Hillsdale's and Primus did a really good expose on this last year. I mean, I'm sorry, two months ago. 
and I, it, people need to wake up. Pritzkers are heavily involved in this. It's big money, and uh, and yet it's it's just it's harmful to change to, to even think that you can change your sex and to lead kids down this road of not accepting who they are and working through those challenges is just. I mean, honestly, I think that generations going forward will, will look back at us and wonder why did we not stand up sooner. And you've also got just the issue of, uh, you know, sports, <laughs> which a lot of people are interested in and how that's, that's right. impacting kids right. uh, with, uh, you know, m- people born as a man uh, going and playing women's sports. Uh, so uh, interesting to, to see all of this uh, in, in the mm-hmm. uh, in the purview of how the legislature may respond. But of course, you've got this petition drive. Tell people again where they can get mm-hmm. information on that. You can go to parentsmattercoalition.org. We have a number of articles posted. We have um facts listed about it we have you can get the petition download it with the instructions one more point about this greg is that there are a number of states that are outright banning any uh discussion of uh, gender modification for minor children and they are outright you know taken away the idea that you can have abortion at all uh for minors or it's got to be very limited and um, and yet all we're asking is that you have to get the consent of the parent. This is not a radical idea. And we're finding a lot of support among uh, different constituencies on the political spectrum. So that's it's been really fun to take on this initiative and we look forward to success. And then finally, you know, as a former state lawmaker, uh, I always appreciate yes. uh, getting uh, uh, the perspective of, uh, you know, now that you're outside looking in after having been inside uh, the state legislature as a Republican in the now super minority. Uh, what do you think taxpayers need to look at, uh, you know, this this issue aside about, uh, you know, the, the, the parental rights issue? Yeah. Uh, what as, you know, taxpayers should they really be looking out for uh, when it comes to, you know, budget season coming up, uh, the the uh, the prospects of gun legislation, the prospects of even here in a bit, we're going to just touch on uh, a measure that could give uh, tax incentives to you know local journalist outfits or even possible taxpayer funded grants to media outlets. Uh, what are some of the things that you think taxpayers really need to keep their eyes on uh, heading into the, the, the budget season? Well, first of all, the, the, it's going to be a dicey budget season this year uh, already. Uh, Pritzker's administration themselves has predicted that they may have a deficit of 700 to 800 million dollars. Obviously, the COVID largesse is, is you know falling away, and uh, they've got a lot more expenses, including with the illegal immigrant population that uh, they're funding. So uh, they've got a lot of problems. I would say uh, taxpayers, you know, hold on to your wallets because. The, you know, it's very, more likely than not that they could try to push down the pensions to the local level that will decimate property taxes. That is always in the offing when the budget comes tight. Uh, so I think that that's one of the concerns. I, I, my biggest concern is what we're funding, uh, quite frankly. And so there's been zero transparency on exactly who's getting all the contra- contracts to provide for illegal alien care. Uh, they've, uh, they have they gave $125 million to Goshen, that Chinese communist uh, plant in Mantino, without them even having building permits yet. They just gave it to them up front. We should not be funding the Ch- communist Chinese, our, our number one adversary. We should not be funding illegal aliens at all. And uh, so you should be very concerned about how they're spending your money because it'll take away resources that you think should be go, go to core government services like security infrastructure and schools so i think that's my biggest concern is there's zero transparency uh on this I, i'm also very very concerned about the big government initiatives that we that we already have from the wellness checks for mental health in grades 7 through 12 which is ridiculous on its face to um to what you just talked about funding the funding the media are you kidding me this this party is the biggest disinformation uh, folks in the history of the United States. Uh, and and uh, I mean, they just what finally admitted that Hunter Biden's laptop was actually his laptop. I mean, give me a break. So I, I think there's a lot of scary initiatives. Uh, business is also really hurting uh, the, um, the BIPA bill with a biometric processing bill that has created millions of dollars of fines for, for companies has to be redone. So there's there's a lot of problems with this big government solution to everything. 
Former State Representative Jeannie Ives, uh, greatly appreciate you taking the time with us this morning. And uh, let's connect again in the near future, all right? Very good. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. It is Bishop on Air. Uh, greatly appreciate uh, Representative Ives being here. Uh, and we'll definitely connect with her in the near future and keep you guys updated on this uh, petition drive with Parents Matter Coalition. Again, parentsmattercoalition.org. You can get more information about that petition. Uh, and we'll uh, keep track of how that's doing. Appreciate her time. All right. Stay tuned. we got plenty more with Bishop on Air. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and uh, follow along.